Hi students, welcome to Cambridge Secondary Checkpoint Seminar of Year 2021 for Science Subject. I am Ms. Renuka from SGIS would like to share some useful information with you all related to Science Checkpoint exam through this video. First and foremost, I would like to introduce the format and code of Science Checkpoint exam for this year. There are two papers with each paper consisting of 50 marks. As you can see, time allocated to complete each paper is 45 minutes. Code for paper 1 will be 11131 and paper 2 will be 11132. I would like to emphasize on this slide particularly because the sets of instructions stated here are very important when you are answering this paper. You must answer on the question paper because for science paper, we have to answer all the questions in that paper itself. No additional materials are needed. And you must use black or dark blue pen. Okay. For diagram or graph, you must use pencil in order if you um, did any mistakes later, then you can rectify your answer accordingly. And Third one is the most important one where you need to write your name, center name and candidate number in the boxes at the top of the page, something like this. Okay. According to your statement of entry, especially your name. Okay. Follow the name exactly as what you can see in your statement of entry. Okay. And write your answer to each question in the space provided. Okay. Do not use an erasable pen or correction fluid. Do not write on any barcodes. You should show all your working in the booklet itself and you can use calculator. Okay, this information regarding the paper, the marks and the question, the marks allocated for each question. For this seminar session, I selected few topics based on an analysis done from secondary checkpoint science papers of 2018 and 2019 papers. Okay, as you can see, I choose a uh, Certain topics from biology, uh, such as uh, cells and functions, adaptations of living things, photosynthesis, and human organ systems. And then for chemistry, there are chapters on structure of an atom, periodic table, reactivity series, and displacement reactions. And for physics, I have I've chosen three topics, which is solar system, uh, light, and sound, which I think these topics are been asked very frequently in your uh, secondary checkpoint science papers okay not only for 2018 and 2019 but actually most of the years like all the years you can see these questions but the way of asking will be different but the content or the basic uh, information will be there okay so that's why i'm emphasizing on this topic hope this uh, discussion will help you through for your 2021 exam Okay, students, so the first topic that I'm going to discuss today is the cells and functions. So usually they will give you the picture of the cells and they will ask you to match with the function or vice versa. Or they will just give you the picture or the name of the cell and they will ask you to explain the function or ask, uh, they will ask you to explain the characteristics of the cell accordingly. So for this 2018 and 2019, let's see what kind of question or what um, the type of question they've asked for these cells and functions. Okay, so the first one you have to match Okay, the cell function with the type of cell correctly. So you must draw four lines only So if you look at this For absorbing water and mineral salt we need these root hair cells Okay to contract you to cause movement is the muscle cells Then you have transport oxygen around the body is the red blood cell and then use light energy to make food. So you can see chloroplast in this plant cell. So this is how you identify function for uh, the cells accordingly. And this one is the nerve cells. Okay. So each one has their own appearance. So you're supposed to know how to differentiate them in order for you to match them with the correct function. But please take note, uh, please take note that uh, two lines from one function box or two lines to one cell type of box, uh, there will be no marks awarded okay, for the two lines because if even though if uh, one is correct, you won't get any marks for that. So be careful 
on the instruction. Okay, just draw one line means just one line. If you can match more than one, then you can match. Okay, depends on the question. Okay, for this particular question, please follow the instructions accordingly. So each mark will give you each line, each correct line will give you one mark. Okay, and then this is another question asked on the say on the 2018 and 2019 paper. Okay, you have to draw two lines only, exactly, uh, let's say almost the same, just that they reduce the mark because they just give you two function to be um, matched with the cell. But this one particularly plant cell only. So, absorb water and minerals from soil, of course, root hair cells, you can see here. And then for transporting water and minerals, to the xylem cells, okay, xylem tissue or through the stem, you can see xylem. Okay, to be specific. Okay, each correct line will get one mark and two lines from a function, you will get zero mark. So, please be careful on this. Okay, students. So, the next topic will be adaptations of living things. Okay, this is showing a mammal called Philippine Thesaur, which live in a rainforest, jumping from tree to tree and they rarely touch the ground. They sleep during the day and hunt for insects at a night. So this is the picture of the sire. You need to use the drawing to suggest three ways the sires are adapted to their habitat. So must use drawing means you must see the physical features. Okay, the features you're choosing must be visible in the diagram. Okay, and not just measuring that this particular sire having eyes, but you must mention what type of eyes they have to to be specific, put the adjective, put the correct adjective that uh, describes the adaptation. Okay, let's say like large eyes or wide eyes, okay, large ears or long fingers. And it must be continue or it must be uh, together with the explanation. Okay, this is the way of uh, doing adaptation questions. Usually you give the features followed up with the the explanation okay why they need the large eyes to gather maximum of light okay why they need the forward facing eyes for them to get the 3d vision so that they can actually estimate the distance accurately okay why they need a uh, large ears okay to have a sensitive hearing okay things like that you have to mention the adaptation the feature physical features something that's visible even though they're not giving you picture you should give something visible features most of the time but sometimes it can be on their um, behavior also but depend but this one already specifically this question they already say use the diagram so please use the diagram in order to give you some marks okay and please explain the reason why you're supposed to have these features and then the continuation of this question will be on the ways to actually increase the number of these desires in the world like more on preservation and conservation so you can give a related answer that how you can actually uh, save this endangered species okay if all both correct then you will get two marks okay you can see over here list of answers that will be accepted such as like prevent poaching maintain the nature reserve so more on preservation and conservation Okay, guys, so the next question will be on the black scabbard fish from the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, this fish is adapted to live in a very deep water where there is a very little light. So, describe how this fish is adapted to live where there is a very little light. Since they already say the condition that they need to adapt in a very little light, so you just need to give the characteristic that's suitable or that they are adapted to, to just adjust themselves in a very little light. So, the answer just, you just say that large eyes or big eyes, you will straight away get one mark. But ignore has night vision because this is not suitable as an answer for how come they can uh, adapt to the very little light. So you ignore this answer. Okay, I, as long as you say large eyes or big eyes can be accepted. Then follow up, the next question, the black scabbard fish is a fast moving predator. Suggest how the color of the fish helped to make it a successful predator. So since they are living in a very uh, deep water where this is very limited light available, so consider black color. So they can hunt without being seen, okay, cannot be seen by prey because it's too dark and their color is too dark. So they will adapt to the surroundings, okay, more on camouflage or blend with the surroundings, difficult to be seen. 
Okay, so you can mention their color and how they are uh, help to become a successful predator. Okay, and two other adaptations that suggest that fish is a fast moving predator. This fish, okay, so you can say on large, powerful jaw, large teeth, or sharp teeth or muscular body or streamlined body or long and thin body to help them swim through the water easily okay, things like that but ignore reference to tail okay you can mention about fin but not the tail you can also say on a uh, large mouth or you can also say about long and narrow or long and slim body like that okay so the uh, the answers are very vast um, we can say a lot of options you can write but please choose the one most visible and most accurate for the question okay next topic will be on photosynthesis this particular topic is very famous in Japan like every year you can have at least one question related to photosynthesis either it can be on the equation of photosynthesis or it can be on the reactant or the product of photosynthesis or question like this where you can see experiment on investigating the factors related to photosynthesis so this is one way of asking questions related to photosynthesis now, uh, now you can see Oliver investigate the effect of light on photosynthesis and he's given uh, the apparatus as shown write down two variables which Oliver needs to control during his investigation so before we moving on to the answer part okay let me just recall on the variables. We have three types of variables, which is the manipulated variable or variable that you changed, or we have responding variables or the variable that you measure. And finally, we have constant variable or the variable that you keep the same or you control throughout the experiment. So for this particular question, you must write at least two variables that you need to control or you must keep the same throughout the investigation. Usually, variable that you kept constant or kept the same or control will be a lot of option to write. Okay, usually it will be a lot. Like manipulator, you can only write one. Responding, you can, you can only write one. But the constant variable, usually you have a lot to write. But try to choose the best one, the most related one, the one where, very significant for the experiment that you must keep control in order to avoid uh, from getting any uh, in, uh, inaccurate data okay try to choose the best answer even though you have a lot of option to write for a constant variable try to choose the best answer that most related or most important to be kept the same in order for you to get the correct answer so for this question you can I'll go with this same type of water plant or I'll go with the size of water plant or the temperature or the time taken. I will try to avoid question, I mean answer related to light source or lamp because that's what I'm investigating now. But you can still explain the light source and lamp in a way that you are you want to capture it control. But just to avoid any mistakes or any any penalization of marks, I will just try to avoid any answer related to light since I'm investigating the effect of light on photosynthesis. I'll focus on the other factors that I suppose to keep the same, such as the carbon dioxide or the water or the light, in, I mean the environment, light intensity of the environment or the plant that I'm, that I'm using, the type or the size, things like that. So try to choose the best answer for the control. Next type of question can be on the reactants and the product of photosynthesis like what I told you before. So look at this question. Plants are able to use light energy to make their own food. Name one substance that, that plants use to make their own food by this process. Substance that plants use meaning they are, it is referring to the reactant of photosynthesis. So for reactant as an answer we have Two, the main one which is the car water or carbon dioxide or you also can write chlorophyll because chlorophyll is the green pigment that can uh, that actually absorb the sunlight to do photosynthesis okay but ignore chloroplast do not write chloroplast as your answer and do not write sunlight as well because light is already mentioned in this question because they already say that plants are using light 
So try to avoid light. Try to un uh, ignore the chloroplast as your answer, but you can write the other answer like water or carbon dioxide or chlorophyll. Or another type of question where they ask very basic questions on uh, photosynthesis, and they ask you to name the process itself. They ask you name the process that plants use to make their own food. So of course that is photosynthesis, and make sure your spelling is correct. And name one other product of this process. So since photosynthesis only gives you two products, one is the food, another one is the oxygen. So you must mention oxygen as the answer for the second question because that's the other product because the main product food has already been mentioned in the first question so that's how it goes for photosynthesis okay looking at another type of question where they can ask on investigation part identical plants are placed in three different gases so they are looking for different gases uh, which gas is suitable for the growth of for the plant for, to do photosynthesis so look at this each plant is given constant light the plants are kept in the same condition for one week. The diagram showing the result of the investigation. So gas A, gas B and gas C in the beginning all look the same. And after one week you can see gas A and gas B and gas C. The plants are in different condition. Okay, You can see plants in gas A which was provided with gas A look a bit bigger, increase in size. Okay, for B, they look like a bit smaller or dying or built. Okay, or gas C, no much changes or no differences. So that's what they ask you to, as a result. Describe the result. So you can just say what happened to gas a plant in gas A, what happened to plant kept in gas B and gas C. So you can see like what I tell you just now, based on their appearance, okay, whether they have grown or they have increased in size or decreased in size or no change at all. So you just need to describe the result accordingly okay moving on to the next one this one also investigating photosynthesis based on an experiment so they are they are using a water plant okay it's easy actually uh, to collect the gas when you're using the water plant so that's why whenever the experiment is actually collecting gas made by photosynthesis they usually use water plant instead of just using the land plant because water plant you can do the setup in a way that you can collect the gas easily like how you are say, looking at this diagram right now this is the famous setup to collect the gas accordingly so in the first experiment they measure the number of gas bubbles made in one minute okay you can either uh, measure the number of bubbles given off or you can actually uh, measure the volume of gas accordingly okay so what is the name of the gas made in photosynthesis Gas made means gas that is produced in photosynthesis, which is of course oxygen. Okay, so be careful on the question whether they're asking you on the gas made or the gas used up. And what equipment does Sophia uh, does Sophia use to measure one minute? So you want to measure time, of course you will be using stopwatch. Okay, so as you can see, you can use the word stopwatch or stop clock as the answer, and then continue. Sophia, uh, Sophia and Jamila do two more experiments. They move the lamp further away from the plant for each experiment. So distance of light, uh, distance between the light and water plant in 10 cm, are 20 cm and 40 cm. And you can see the number of gas bubbles released by the plant accordingly. So roughly you can see the connection or you can see the relationship between these two variables. Okay. So, uh, for your information, usually the table will give you information on the variables. The distance between the light and the plant is what you change. Okay, so that one will be your manipulated variable, the variable that you change. And the number of gas bubbles released okay, by the plant is the outcome of the experiment, is the variable that you measure. So, that is your responding variable. Okay, so when the distance increases, the number of gas bubbles decreases because when the plant go away from the light they can't do much photosynthesis that's a, that's a rough idea when you're looking at the table now the first question they're asking you why do they use one minute for each experiment okay because you must control the variable you must use the same timing right all right so that's your reason why you must fix the timing for the experiment also um, so you can just say it is a control variable or you can just 
say to make a fair test or to allow a comparison so a variable that does not change can be accepted you must make the time as your fixed or the control variable okay and please complete the sentence describing the pattern of the result the pattern usually referring to the hypothesis like how you can explain the relationship between the manipulated variable and the responding variable so uh, for this question you can say as the distance between the light and water plant increases okay going down the group is increases i mean going down the table is increases the number of gas bubbles decreases you just mentioned the trend okay this one increases this one will be decreases and predict the results if prediction you can just give any rough um, value on the answer part okay it will be a, a range of answer they can accept because it's just a prediction as long as it's it is within the given range then you still get can get marked unless they ask you to get the exact value then you're supposed to get the exact value like uh, they give you a graph and then they ask you to get the exact value then you're supposed to give one answer only like one answer only will be accepted but prediction based on the table usually they will give a range of answer that can be accepted for this one a distance of 30 cm so a distance of 30 cm will be somewhere here between 20 to 40 right so your number of gas bubble really is also supposed to be any answer less than 54 but must be more than 26 so same as 54 won't be accepted so 53 onwards all the way to 27 will be accepted so must be less than 54 but must be more than 26 okay and a distance of 50 cm 50 cm is here right after 40 so your answer must be less than 26 so any answer within 1 to 25 will be accepted any answer you can give any number within 1 to 25 can be accepted and lastly circle the correct word or phrase that complete the conclusion so the rate of photosynthesis decreases as light decreases okay because um, as you can see when the distance is further away the number of gas bubbles decreases right so the number of gas bubbles actually the rate of photosynthesis so when the distance increases meaning the light actually decreasing as the plant is going further from the light they can't get much light so the light decreases so the rate of photosynthesis also decreases moving further so this is another way of asking question like some sort of equation but not directly equation but they're asking all about what is needed and what is produced in photosynthesis process so energy from sunlight just use the word from the list so energy from the sunlight uses uses huh? the plant uses carbon dioxide from the air and takes in water through the roots because the roots is the place where they absorb water right so takes in the water through the roots to make glucose okay the word oxygen is not uh, mentioned here so the only thing that is related to the product of photosynthesis is glucose so makes glucose so that will be the answer for this diagram moving on to the next topic in biology will be on human organ system so we will be covering certain topics or certain uh, systems under this uh, video so you can see the first one is on human respiratory system so this one is just labeling the respiratory system the main parts so the first one will be a the a is trachea okay followed by these two branches or we call this as bronchus followed by actually bronchiole the smaller branches are known as bronchioles and at the end we have a lot of alveolus okay alveolus is the main part or main uh, place where these gases exchange happen okay and then we have c the structure c is called as diaphragm okay this one is for human respiratory system moving on to the next type of question where we have on the circulatory system the human heart being shown in this diagram but the question can be related a little bit on the respiratory system as well not directly but indirectly this is also in related to uh, respiratory system so if we can look at the first question complete the table about the composition of the blood that going to the lungs 
okay the blood that going to the lungs will be the deoxygenated blood because at lungs is the place where gases exchange happen right the carbon dioxide will be moving out of the body and then oxygen will be coming in so the blood that coming from the lung will be oxygenated and the blood which is going towards the lung will be deoxygenated so so that in the lung we can oxygenate the blood actually okay so that's the idea so you have to uh, tick two boxes that describe the correct composition of this blood so looking at the concentration of carbon dioxide this is deoxygenated blood so they're supposed to have high concentration of carbon dioxide and less concentration or low concentration of oxygen if both answer is correct then only you will get one mark okay please take note and the second one the blood vessel labeled x on the diagram you can see the one carry blood away from the heart okay what name is given to this type of blood vessel so they're not asking you to name specifically the name of the blood vessel they just ask you to state the type okay since we have three types we have artery veins and capillary the one carry blood away from the heart will be the artery so x will be artery and the blood vessel labeled x uh, as a very thick walls okay explain why this is necessary since this blood is carrying blood away from the heart this blood, uh, this blood is at high pressure because they need to pump the blood to all your body parts they need to bring this blood to all your body parts so they're supposed to be in a high pressure so to withstand that pressure okay so that this this blood vessel are not burst okay uh, so that they can uh, they are not ruptured so they suppose have this thick wall so please give the uh, most related reason why the uh, blood vessel supposed to have a very thick wall and i'm taking this uh, point also to tell you um, just look through the differences between the artery uh, the vein and the capillaries as a revision process so that you know what is the main difference like what is the thickness of the wall about what is the size of the lumen what type of blood they will carry whether they are carrying blood away from the heart or towards the heart so things like that you're supposed to know to differentiate this artery veins and capillary another thing in circulatory system you also need to know the components of the blood which includes the red blood cell white blood cell platelets plasma okay all that have their own function so you're supposed to know their appearance together with their function so this is just as a recalling process for you guys to just look through the important facts related to these blood components and the blood vessels okay not forgetting the structure of the heart itself okay this is another way of asking question related to circulatory system where they give you a detailed structure of the heart and then they ask you to identify the part based on their description so looking at the first one first description the part that pumps blood to the lungs okay the part that pump blood towards the lung will be on your right hand side specifically the right ventricle okay that will be the one that pump blood to the lungs okay so which is indicated by f followed by the part where the oxygen leave the blood will be e okay oxygen leave the blood when they reach these cells, all your body parts where the oxygen the blood uh, reach the cells, the cells will uh, obtain the oxygen from the blood and then they will give out the carbon dioxide that will be carried by the blood as deoxygenated blood towards your right part of your heart. Okay, the part where the blood at its greatest pressure will be this, which is your left ventricle, because the left ventricle will be the one that pumping blood to all your body parts through this blood vessels so the pressure will be highest here to actually make the blood to flow to all your body parts so the indication will be on c and finally an artery that takes blood to the body will be this aorta like i told you the left ventricle will be pumping blood all the way to your body parts right through these blood vessels known as aorta which is indicated by letter d okay next question will be on the digestive system so it can be on overall uh, information on digestive system or can be a part or one organ in the digestive system like what they are showing here a stomach which is an organ and they ask you to explain 
your answer why you say stomach is an organ so the definition will be because it is made up of several different tissues and you can relate with the information given in the diagram like they are made up of muscles and blood vessels okay different different tissues different types of cell okay that makes up the tissue and tissue make up the organ so you can explain it that way okay if you straight away say not organ okay you say your answer is different okay not organ then straight away you will get zero for this question okay so please be careful on identifying the organization of the cell structures okay moving on to the next question okay we also, uh, the checkpoint question also can be on the very specific part where they can ask you to explain the structure of the red blood cell related to the function. Like you have to explain about their structure, whether they are carrying, uh, contains hemoglobin for what, okay, why their shape is small, okay, why they must have a large surface area, why there are no nucleus. So you must explain the structure and the reason, okay, since you know red blood cell is to carry oxygen, but why? And what kind of adaptation they're supposed to have to carry the uh, oxygen eff uh, effectively. So you must mention or you must explain accordingly. Like the second one, they ask you to uh, explain on the muscle cell. So you see they have a long fiber for what? What is the function? So one structural feature, you get one mark. Another one, how the structural uh, structure relates to the function, you get one more mark. Okay. Looking at the last one is on human skeleton, human skeletal system. Name the tissue which are which make up the cell skeleton. So that's bone. Okay, don't give other answer like ligament, muscle, or bone marrow, which, which is won't be accepted. Okay, and the function of skeletal, a skeleton you can just write as a protection of internal organ or for the movement of the joints or the support. Or accordingly, any related answer. Correct answer related to function of skeleton will be accepted. Okay, moving on to the chemistry part of the analysis. The first topic will be on the structure of an atom. So based on the structure, either it's a basic structure of an atom or very specific structure like what you can see here where they're showing the electrons, the number of electrons very clearly. You must know how to label or how to read the diagram carefully. Okay, for this question, you must know the one on the shells, okay, there are three shells here. So the one moving around the shells will be the electrons. So you just need to calculate the overall number of electrons in order for you to answer the first question. And the scientists that related to the structure of atom or the periodic table will be the Rutherford. Okay, the group of the element, okay, the group of the element are based on the last electrons, the number of electrons in the last shell. So since here we have one, two, three. Three electron in the last shell, we call this as a valence electron, so the group will be three. Just in case if I'm asking for the period of this element, so where, uh, in which period of the periodic table is element found? Let's say I ask you that question. So in that case, if I'm asking on period, you need to calculate the number of shells. Okay, so number of shells here is one, two, and three, so the period also will be three. Okay, so the group and the period will be determined will be determined based on this the electron on the last shell and also the number of shells accordingly okay and the properties of aluminium you can see why they are used in circuit boards or batteries because they are a very good conductor of electricity but other answer like ductile or flexible or malleable also will be accepted okay and this question is a bit uh, on the chemical properties of aluminium when the aluminium uh, aluminium burns in air they will form a compound so aluminium actually reacting with oxygen to form aluminium oxide okay moving on okay the next part this is what i called you very specific diagram where they show you the protons the neutrons together with the electrons all that but you must know how to differentiate between proton and neutron because electrons are very easy. The one on the shell is electrons, right? Uh, on the shells are electrons, right? So the one inside here is a combination of both. But how are you going to differentiate which one is protons and which one is uh, neutrons? You need to calculate the number of electrons because in an element, okay, which in a neutral element, the number of electrons and number of protons will be the 
same okay for an uh, element in the periodic table right before they become ion and charged and all that story coming in okay as an element in the periodic table they're supposed to have the same number of proton and electron so you calculate the number of electron first we in this diagram we have one two three four five so five electron that means the one with the five supposed to be the proton so the white color is five here so the white color will be the proton and the remaining or the gray color here will be the neutron so that's how you differentiate neutron and proton accordingly so once you already identify them you have to complete the sentence according to the wordings correct wordings so nucleus of an atom contains protons and neutrons while the nucleus is surrounded by particles called electrons so if you answer all that correctly you will get three marks okay the next way of asking you can see is still the same they can ask you to label the particles so the one on the shelves will be the electrons so label to that will be the electrons the number of particles that are missing, I mean, name the particle that are missing will be proton because inside the nucleus we have neutrons and protons. So the proton is the one missing over here. So if you label proton correctly, you get one mark. Then you must draw on the diagram the correct position and the number of missing particles. Okay. Correct position must be inside this inner circle. Okay, and the number must be two only because same as electrons. So please draw correctly uh, to ensure you uh, to ensure that you get the correct mark. I mean the allocated mark. Okay, the uh, the continuation of uh, questions related to atom can also be the periodic table. Okay, they are highly related the atom and the periodic table. So they can also combine the questions related to periodic table in a question related to atom. So in this case, they are showing a group of the periodic table that contains helium. The elements are in the same order as they appear in the periodic table. Which element in the group has the largest atomic number? So as you go down the periodic table, the atomic number actually increases. So the radon will be the one with the largest atomic number. And the radius also increases as, as you go down because the number of shells getting more and more. The size is getting more and bigger and bigger. So the radius also increases okay next we go into specifically into periodic table where you can see questions here uh, the chemical symbol of for lithium is li so i just want to advise advise you guys to just uh, at least remember the first 20 elements in the periodic table the chemical symbols and the name of the first 20 elements at least to make make you uh, feel easy when you want to answer certain questions when you want to certain uh, when you want to understand certain symbols or when you want to identify certain symbols so the first 20 elements try to remember they are chemical symbols okay the formula for water will be h2o the formula for lithium hydroxide will be lioh okay lithium hydroxide which of the substance is an element okay it's an element whether it's lithium or the water or the lithium hydroxide when you're talking about element they must made up of one type of atom only in this case the answer will be lithium and the explanation is what i told you just now it must contain only one type of atom if you answer wrongly for the first one you won't get marks at all for this question moving on next lithium is in group one of the periodic table so the diagram showing some elements in group one describe how the reactivity of the group one metal changes as you go down so group one elements or group two element the metals right the reactivity actually increases when you go down okay this is highly related for the um, position of the valence electron from the nucleus is very fast so make them very reactive so you just need to remember like roughly a uh, group one and group two their reactivity increases as it as, the, as you go down the group okay so try to remember that Okay, so the next question will be a combination also about the atom and the periodic table. So the name, the part of the atom labeled X. So of course, again, electron moving around the shell. And then describe how you can tell that the element is in group 4 of the periodic table. Like what I told you just now and using the information from the diagram, looking at the 4 electrons in the outermost shell. That's what determine the group. So please remember that, okay, the, the number of electrons in the valence shell will determine the group. The number of shell will determine the period. 
Okay, what happened to the size of atom as you move down group 4? The size, okay, size you can use the word bigger or gets larger or increases. Don't use the word heavier because heavier is more on the mass. So if you're talking about size, just say that the size getting bigger. Okay, usually because of the shells increasing, the size also getting bigger. Okay, moving on, next one about periodic table and totally they are using uh, chemical symbols. So that's why I told you to always remember at least the first 20 chemical symbols and you must choose uh, from the alphabet given or from the chemical symbol given. So please write your answer as in the form been asked. Okay, don't give the real name or don't give your the full name. Because they already say choose from H or O or N E or N A or C L, which is hydrogen or oxygen or neon, sodium or chlorine accordingly. So use the chemical symbol to answer this question. So the smallest atom will be H because the proton number is 1, right? So the smallest atom will be H. And which chemical symbol shows a metal? So a metal usually in group 1 and group 2. So we just take N A, which is the sodium as a representative representative of a metal okay the next part under chemistry is the reactivity series okay most of the time they will be asking on the reaction between metal and acid or be between reaction of metal with water accordingly and they will just want to see how fast these metals can react and they will form this reactivity series and after that the reactivity series will be uh, followed with the displacement reaction okay so let's look at the questions being asked in 2018 and 2019 on this topic. So the first one, they give you a reaction between metals and the dihydrochloric acid. And they measure the time it takes for the metal to react completely. So the idea here, the reaction time is actually referring to the time taken for them to react completely. Which means if they are very reactive, they're supposed to take a shorter time to react. So that's the idea. So don't say that uh, 290 is supposed to be the most reactive one. They are taking a very long time to react. So it's supposed to be least reactive. So please understand the concept of the experiment clearly before you start answering the question. Okay. So the least time will be the most reactive. So the calcium will be in the first place followed by the magnesium and the zinc and then lastly iron. Okay. The second type of question. Uh, they are actually, uh, this Jamila is actually investigating the reaction between different metal with hydrochloric acid. So they are using, I mean she's using like magnesium, zinc and iron. And she wants to measure how long it takes for the reaction with each metal to make 50 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas. Okay, the idea here is you want to use different metals and you want to see how long does it take, the time taken to produce 50 centimeter cube of gas. So the one you are changing is actually the type of metal and the one you're going to measure is the time. So other factors, especially the one related to the acid, must be kept constant. Okay, that's the idea. So now we go into the variables. Okay, they give a list of variables and you need to identify the manipulator, the responding and the constant variable accordingly. So the variable that she changed is the metal used. The variables that she keep the same, like what I told you before, constant variable usually have more than one answer. So in this case, the variable that's supposed to be the same is the volume of acid used, the concentration of the acid, and the temperature of the room. Okay, Because the acid is, you cannot change the acid, you cannot do any changes with the acid, you must just change the metal and see how fast they can react to make the same amount of hydrogen gas. How long does it take? So the time is the one you are measuring now. So the measurement of your variable, which means your responding variable, which will be the time to make 50 centimeter cube of hydrogen gas. So you can just put the alphabet accordingly. But take note, if you wrong in this uh, variable that you must keep constant, you will lose marks here. Because one mark for metal use, one mark for the measured one. For the constant, you're supposed to get two marks. But if anything correct, like two correct, then you just get one mark. Okay, so if one only correct out of three, you get zero marks. So please take note on this. Okay, continuation, they're asking you, uh, she already predicts that hydrochloric acid will react fastest with zinc. Okay, looking at the result, 
actually magnesium take 50 centi uh, 50 seconds only to make 50 centimeter cube iron take 280 seconds while zinc take 200 seconds but you are, you must think and tell me whether the jamila's prediction correct or wrong like what is our idea be previously if the metal is very reactive they supposed to take uh, supposed to take lesser time right to react so the first answer the prediction is wrong because Zing is not the fastest. Zing is not the one taking the least time, right? So, no. So, the moment you say no, okay, you already secure your mark. Then you move on to the explanation. So, you can just compare the time and the rate accordingly. So, Zing does not take the shortest time to make 50 centimeter cube of gas. Or, magnesium taking the uh, shortest time to make 50 centimeter cube of gas. Or, you just say, after that, you just compare. Magnesium is the fastest and or in other words, you can say zinc, zinc is lower than magnesium like that. Or you also can say magnesium is more reactive than zinc. Okay. Don't just um, take the reading from the table and give us answer. Don't just say like uh, zinc is taking 200 seconds to produce gas while iron, uh, like, uh, like uh, while this magnesium taking 50 seconds only to, to produce a 50 centimeter cube of gas. Okay. Don't just compare the time. Use the adjective, use the word like shorter or longer time, shortest time, longest time, like that. Don't quote, uh, don't quote the time 100% from the table. Try to analyze the table and give your own wordings. Okay. And if you say yes in the first place here, then zero marks straight away for this question. Okay. It means you don't understand what is going on. Okay. So if you say yes already here, but your explanation. Uh, explanation somehow correct you still won't get any marks okay the next way of asking question where they already give you the list of metals in the reactivity series and they want you to answer based on the reactivity series given so in this case they are telling you that iron reacts with dilute acid but not with cold water so this is very important information okay and then they ask you to write down one metal that react with both dilute acid and cold water so, if they can react with both, it's supposed to be higher than iron in the periodic table. I mean, I mean in the reactivity series, right? So, we will choose either potassium, sodium or calcium to be safe. Because we are talking about dilute acid, like a very weak acid. And we are talking about like uh, cold water, not just warm water or normal water. So, better to choose the first three in the reactivity series. Okay, moving on to the next question. They ask you, copper react with silver nitrate but not with lead nitrate. Okay, why? Okay, copper and silver nitrate got reaction. But copper with lead, no reaction. This is more on the displacement method. Okay, displacement method can only happen if the single metal that you're using is more reactive than the one in the compound. Compared to metal, the one single is more reactive than the one in the compound. So, if you compare copper with silver nitrate, copper is more reactive than silver nitrate. Uh, sorry, copper is more reactive than silver because silver is lower in the reactivity series or copper is higher in the reactivity series compared to silver. So, that's one reason. And why copper cannot react with lead, okay, nitrate? Because copper is less reactive than lead. So, copper cannot actually take the nitrate from the lead because copper is less reactive. So, in other words, you can explain on the position that copper is actually uh, lower in the reactivity series compared to lead. So, you compare both uh, lead and silver with the copper in order to get two marks. Okay, explain on the position or explain on the reactive uh, react, reactivity uh, ability to react, okay, the reactive reactivity of the metals. When the copper react with silver nitrate, two products are formed. Okay, this is directly into displacement reaction. When copper react with silver nitrate, so the copper is more reactive. So the copper will take the nitrate to form copper nitrate and the silver will be left alone. So you will get copper nitrate and silver. If both correct, then only you will get one mark. Okay, moving on to the next one, displacement reaction. So this one. This particular reaction you can answer based on the reactivity series. So, in order for you to really do the question related to displacement reaction, you must understand reactivity series. You must know the position. 
you must know which one can displace another metal, which one cannot displace another metal like that. So that sort of thing is very important. But this one is kind of basic, the first example that I'm going to show you, where this one, iron plus copper sulfate, okay, a reaction takes place, and then it forms copper and iron sulfate. So they already give you the reactant, they already give you the product, they just ask you to put in a equation form, okay. So you just put in the reactant before the arrow, which is iron plus copper sulfate, any order also fine, but make sure it's iron and copper sulfate on the reactant part before the arrow and after the arrow will be the product which will be the copper and iron sulfate accordingly okay or iron sulfate and copper the order is not important next question uh, Chen repeat his method with some other metals and metal salt solution here are his results so this one you have to analyze a little bit before you can put them in order of reactivity analyze in terms that you have to compare if the reaction not happening, that means this one is less reactive. The first method is actually less reactive than the one in the solution, salt solution. That's why they cannot display, so no reaction. If reaction can happen, which means this one is more reactive. That's all you have to understand. The single one more reactive means the reaction can happen. If the single one is less reactive, the reaction will not happen so try to understand this concept then from there you can actually put them in order you just need to know whether copper is more reactive or not iron is more reactive or not thing is more reactive or not from there you can get this three into their order correctly if all correctly done then only you get one mark okay following the next one also the same concept you see they're giving metal and they are giving you salt solution and they give you the observation. Observation is given to make you determine. I mean, you, you can't have the reactivity series here in the question. In that case, if, if in, in a case that you don't have your reactivity series with you, you still can predict the position of the elements, I mean, position of the metals based on the reaction. If no reaction, it means this one less reactive than the salt one. If, if got reaction means this one, the metal is more reactive than the one in the salt solution. That's it. That's the idea. Once you're already clear about it, you can just put them in order. So I already put the answer here for your reference. Okay. And the type of reaction he is investigating is actually displacement reaction. When there are two metals here, one is in a single form, another one is in a salt solution form. Then the one is called as displacement reaction. Okay guys, now we are entering into the physics part with the first topic on solar system. So look, let's look at the question. There are many objects in space. Which object is a source of light? So you just need to choose an object that can be a source of light, which we also can call as luminous object, which can emit its own light. So usually the only answer will be star. Okay, because star is the only one that can produce their own light which means like sun, sun is an example of star, right? So star will be the only answer. But how come you can still see the other objects which are not actually a source of light, but you can still see them, not only comets, why you can see the moon, why you can see other planets. So the answer always the same because they are actually reflecting the light from the sun. So that's the concept. Why we can see that particular object because they are reflecting the light. Okay, so not no matter you're talking about comets or you're talking about the moons, I mean, you're talking about the moon or you're talking about the planet, the answer will be the same. They are reflecting the sunlight. They are reflecting the light from the star, from the sun. Okay, that's the idea. Moving on, the next uh, order of the planets. Okay, also very uh, a famous question or popular questions in checkpoint where you need to know the order of the planets. So sometimes they just give you uh, like randomly, like what you can see in this picture here. So they just ask you to name the planet accordingly. So you're supposed to know the name of the planet starting from the one nearest until the furthest from the sun. But they can ask anything in between also. Okay, moving on. Next, you can see still the same uh, way of asking. They ask you to name the two planets nearest to the sun. Okay. And then they ask you why we can see the planet. Okay, we can see the sun because it's a source of light. But how come we can see the planet? So like what I told you before, 
It's the same thing. Okay, the way of asking only different, but the concept is always the same and most of the time is the same. So you just need to understand the concept clearly. Okay, this one, uh, Rajiv draw a picture of the stars in the night sky from his bedroom window. So you can see the picture in the January and picture in the June. So what uh, is the one difference you can see between the two pictures? So you, the obvious one, you can see the positions of the stars are not the same. Or you can say the size of the star look different or yeah, the brightness of the star look different. But the most uh, obvious one is the position. Okay, And Rajiv draw another picture in January of the next year. What will the picture look like? So it's supposed to be similar with the one in January. Right? Because when the earth rotate and the earth move around after one year, it's supposed to give you the same position. Right? So it's supposed to be similar. Okay, moving on next. Same thing. Name two light source in space. So anything related to star, not only sun, okay, any star, any other star, as long as you consider them as star, they can produce their own light, okay. And next question you see, human can see Mars from Earth. Why we can see Mars? Same thing, because light from the sun is reflected by Mars, okay, because the Mars is reflecting the light from the sun, something like that, it can also. But why we cannot see the details on the surface, because they are very far. Very long distance from Earth. So poor resolution and all that. Okay, the next question on the humans can see the star polar rays from Earth. It appears to move during the different times of the year. Explain why polar rays appears to move. Okay, so the reason why the polar rays, the star appear like moving. Okay, or we can see like the sun position is different. Okay, but actually not the sun is the one moving. But it's actually the reason is the earth is the one moving or the earth is rotating or the earth is orbiting. That's the reason why we can see the stars moving. But actually the real movement is actually happening in the earth. Okay, okay. actually got two types of uh, two types of movement. Either the earth is rotating on its axis and the earth is also orbiting around the sun. Okay. But most of the time, you just say the earth is rotating, it's already correct. Because you can see the different position of the sun or different position of the star or you see the star like moving all because of earth moving. Moving on, they also can ask you, uh, they can ask you a question like a, in a quiz form where they just ask you to state the name of the inner planet, name of the most distant planet or uh, name of the object that all the planets in our solar system are beating. So I've included the answer here for your reference. Okay, and looking at this question, you can see the camera, uh, a camera normally like slide into it for a second and this camera, the camera that took this photograph, let the light into it for 30 minutes. What object in the night sky make the lines on the photograph? So the one you can see during the light, night, uh, light during the night sky will be the star. Okay, explain why they look like lines. Actually, they're supposed to be like a dot. But when you took this photograph for 30 minutes at that, right? So it, it caused uh, the, something look like a line because the earth is actually moving. The earth is rotating. So you see, the concept is the same. The next topic under physics will be light. There are a wide range of questions that can be asked under this topic which include like reflection, refraction, or dispersion of light, scattering, addition, or subtraction of light. There's a lot to ask. So let's go through some questions from 2018 and 2019 from this uh, particular topic. So the first question related to light and colored filters, where they're passing through white light. Okay, white light are made up of the three primary colors. So when they pass through red filter, which is the primary color filter, they only allow the same color to pass through. So you can see red color over here. And then second thing, you have green filter. Green filter also as primary color filter. So it only allows the same color. Since red is over here, so the red cannot pass through green filter. In that case, you will get no light or you can just write black or no color still accepted. Okay. But the, for the second situation, you see white light going through the blue filter, you will get blue color light but when the blue color want to pass through cyan filter cyan filter is a secondary color filter so the good thing about cyan is they allow the color that made 
making up the cyan. Okay, can pass through. So blue is one of the color that making up cyan, right? So the blue can still pass through. So at the end, at B, you will still see blue color. So that's what happened when you're using filtration. Or this kind of question is quite famous where they are asking you for addition of different colors starting from primary. So they will ask you this three primary color will be given. Then they ask you red plus blue, what will be the color? So magenta, blue plus green, you will get cyan. And then green and red is yellow, they already given uh, it as an answer. So if you put these two answer correctly, then you're supposed to get two marks. When you add all this primary color together, you will get white light. Okay, that's the concept. Moving on, you see the same question been repeated, but this time they ask you to label four, but you still get two marks. Okay, so the same concept, red, blue, magenta, blue, green, cyan, and then green, red, you get yellow, and the in, in the middle one will be white. So if you put all that together, all the answer correct, then only you get two marks. If two or three correct, then you get just one mark accordingly. Okay. So this one can be a situation on torchlight also, like they are pointing torchlight in different color. And then you see the overlapping of this color, what will be produced. It's the same concept. Okay, moving on next, this is on dispersion. Okay, light dispersion, where the white light split into different colors by a glass prism. Okay, the concept behind the dispersion of light is actually refraction. When the light passing through different density, they get refracted. Okay, but the name of the phenomenon is dispersion. Okay, don't write refraction because refraction is the reason why you get the seven color because the light is passing through different density. So they get bent in a different angle because they are in a different wavelength. But the phenomena name of splitting one white light into seven colors is called as dispersion. And you're supposed to know the seven colors in order. As you can see here, you have to put them in order. If all correct, Three correct in order, then you will, you will get two marks. Following one, uh, this is the reflection of light. I think this is the most simple one where you can just label the incident ray, the reflected ray, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. And then we have one line in the middle. We call that as normal and the line and the light get reflected on the mirror. So this one, we have the law of reflection, but most of the time, they just ask you to label this uh, diagram accordingly. Okay, if all five been uh, labeled correctly, then only you will get three marks. Okay, so please be careful on this, especially when you want to name the angle. Don't just write as incident ray. Uh, sorry, don't just write as incident angle. Okay, for angle, you're supposed to write angle of incidence. For the ray, you write as incident ray. So there is a difference there. Please be vigilant when you are doing this. Okay, don't write reflected angle or reflection angle. It's an angle of reflection. Okay, follow the words given. Okay, this one also same like just now. There is a filter. So white light made up of the three primary colors. Okay, passing through the red filter. So only red color light can pass through. So here in this area, we will have red. But the red color want to pass through green filter cannot. Uh, green filter cannot, so you will see nothing on the screen. So you say no color, black or nothing can be accepted, and explain your answer. So like what I explained you verbally just now, you just say red filter only allow red light to pass through. Okay, or in another word, you can say red filter absorb all other light except for red, and same goes to green filter. So green filter absorb all other color. So the green filter also absorbs the red color, so, I mean the red light. That's why they cannot pass through. Things like that you need to explain in order to show why there is no, nothing formed on the screen. Okay, moving on. This is also a reflection, but on the two different surfaces where you have rough surface and smooth surface. So this one, more on the law of reflection, you can see the angle of reflection equal to the angle of incidence. Okay, they put here, you can accept incident, but I will highly uh, encourage you or uh, highly um, appreciate if you can just put incidents, just practice the correct wording. Okay, so the reflection on the rough and smooth surfaces are different. Write down one differences. You just say 
what you can see in terms of the difference about the ray. Are the all the rays are parallel or not, or not? All the rays are lined up or not? <coughs> when they hit and leave the surface, are they all in the same direction or not? So you can just look at the diagram and explain according to the differences you can see. Okay. Okay, moving on to the last part of our seminar, which is on topic sound. Okay, the most important or most uh, uh, important facts that you know uh, you need to know about this topic is that the connection between the amplitude and the loudness and between the frequency and the pitch. Okay, the question will be um, varies, but the concept at the end of the day they will always relate this. Okay, if you're increasing the amplitude, you're actually increasing the loudness. And if you're increasing the frequency, you are actually increasing the pitch. So that's the connection you need to know and vice versa. Okay, so looking at the question, okay, in 2018 and 2019, okay, let's see. Sound with a higher pitch than A. So A is your controller here. You can see the pitch is based on the frequency, right? So here you can see how many frequency in A, just two. You can see one and two, two vibrations. So two, uh, the the frequency is 2, let's say. And then you must choose something more than 2. So the only answer here is 3, E, right? Because got more frequency. Okay. Larger volume or louder than A. So you're supposed to go for high, higher amplitude than A. So the answer will be B. Higher amplitude than A. A will be B. Sound with smaller frequency. Because low pitch, so smaller frequency will be B. Compared to A. Okay, A got 2, so this one only got 1. So that one S shape like that, consider like one frequency. Uh, sorry, one vibration. So that one is considered like um, the calculation for the frequency. And sound with smaller amplitude will be C. Comparing the amplitude, okay, C is smaller. So always remember the connection, okay. So always you can see the questions are related to amplitude and frequency most of the time. So at A, the wave has the highest amplitude you can see the amplitude is very high which is very loud and then at a and b a and b the wave has the same frequency the number of frequency is the same okay but the loudness is different okay that's the concept okay this one um uh, also quite uh, quite uh, famous in terms of you must know where is the compression and re rarefaction of the air particles. So the place where the particles are very close to each other, the one is the compression. Okay, here you can see the air particles are very close to each other. The one is compression of air particles. Where the air particles are far apart, the one is rarefaction. So you just need to label one as C and another one as R. So the far one as R. The very near one as C. Okay, that's it. To know, to show the arrangement of air particles. Okay, so this question is same as the previous one, almost. So the dots on the diagram are air particles. So in the area A, okay, this area, the dots are very close together. So this this area is called as compression. In area B, you see the dots are far apart. So this area is called a Rarefaction. Moving on to the last question in the seminar. Okay, uh, look at this different sound traces with an oscilloscope. You can see the sound is moving from A to B, right? What is happening? You need to describe in terms of the pitch, frequency, the volume, and the amplitude. So the frequency, you can see the number of vibrations are actually decreasing, which means the pitch is decreasing. Same goes the frequency because these two are related. And if you look at the volume, which means the amplitude, is actually the same. Okay, the amplitude, the height of that peak is the same. The amplitude is the same, which means the volume also the same. Okay, stays the same. So, for this particular topic, for sound, is it will be very helpful if you can uh, really understand or really can connect the um. The, uh, the connection, you can see the connection between the amplitude and the loudness, the frequency with the pitch. That's it. So the question will be mostly related in between that only. Okay. 
okay we are at the end of our seminar for today on checkpoint science exam so hope this video will help you to cover most of the topics for your checkpoint exam and make you makes you understand better on the key points that you need to know for this particular topics and last but not least i would like to share this quote from albert einstein that never regard study as a duty but but as an as the enviable opportunity to learn so keep on learning all the best for your exam thanks again